Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, The Bright Storyteller. Today I'm going to talk about a movie called The Balkan Frontier. It's a military drama film based on historical events of a war. Watch out for them spoilers, boy! Let's get to it! The movie is set in the year 1995. During this time, the NATO forces capture an Albanian extremist in the country of Bosnia, located on the Balkan Peninsula. One of the squads sent on this mission includes a Russian Special Forces unit under the command of Andrei Shatalov, the main hero of the movie. During this dangerous operation, the Special Forces unit suffers a casualty and loses one of their own men. Upon evacuating the danger zone, it is discovered that Shatalov had disobeyed orders to release the militant during the struggle aboard the plane. Shatalov throws the captive out of the helicopter. The excuse he provides for violating orders is a miscommunication error. Oops! The order don't kill the hostage was not clear enough. And for this reason, the Special Forces unit goes out of their jurisdiction and faces legal complications which prevents the soldiers from returning home. It is now the year 1999. NATO is once again stirring up trouble and this time it's going to start bombing Yugoslavia. And in the process, houses and hospitals are demolished into rubble. In a parallel timeline, in Moscow, General Somov gives highly classified orders to Bek Etkhoev to occupy the Sladna airport in Pristina and maintain control until backup arrives. Bek, being the former commander of Shatalov, persuades the general to allow him to assemble his former team, which is still hiding in Yugoslavia, to carry out this wonderful mission. General Somov plays hard to get, but eventually he agrees to assemble the former team together. Meanwhile, Shatalov visits a criminal named Goran to receive a fake Yugoslav passport. The document is ready for use, however, the quality of the passport is absolutely terrible. Goran needs a new profession. All of a sudden, the local police burst into Goran's house, causing Shatalov to shat in his dungarees. It turns out that Goran is the head of the police in the city. What a twist. Goran offers Shatalov a deal. Either he reveals his identity and takes the job working for the police, or he remains silent and is deported back to Russia. Shatalov does not want to be deported back to Russia to face criminal charges, so he makes a confession about his current situation. Goran employs him at the station and provides a real passport with the name Raid Domic. The other former members of the Special Forces unit are not having the best of luck. Vera, a former sniper of the group, works as a security guard in a brothel, and Ilya drinks at a local bar almost every day. And only the former saper, Oleg, manages to put his skills into practice. He helps his Yugoslav colleagues deactivate unexploded bombs, which were dropped in a previous war. Finding everyone except Shatalov, Beck gathers the team and briefs them in on the mission promising to restore their ranks and honor if they succeed. A call is received from General Somov, transmitting the order to advance towards Slatna. Meanwhile, in the city of Vuk, a young Serbian policeman suffers a tragic loss. Albanian radicalists killed his entire family during a holiday celebration. Goran and his Albanian colleague Fadil forcibly prevent the Serbian officer from hanging himself. Shatalov takes a bus to prison and meets a local doctor named Jansa. While driving through the mountain pass, their bus is stopped by a terrorist group led by an Albanian warlord named Smik. The terrorist forces the passengers off the bus and beat them senselessly. One of the bandits knocks out Shatalov, and Smik himself kills the priest for refusing to utter the phrase, There is no God but Allah. After that, one of the bandits tries to rape Yasna, the lady doctor. But wait, Shatalov suddenly wakes up and seizes the moment to take Smeek hostage. At this moment, Shatalov enters beast mode. He kills several militants and shoots through the wheels of their cars. Then he forces Smeek to order the other terrorists to lay down their arms. And now Shatalov is the new enemy on the block. 
The passengers are escorted off the bus to the Glovac Hospital, where Jasna works. Dr. Stern, from the Hospital of Switzerland, joins Jasna to take the body of the priest to the monastery, after which he invites her to stay the night at his house. Ooh. In search of Shatalov, Smeek seizes the police station in the morning and interrogates Goron the officer, demanding the whereabouts of the Russian Serb. But Goron refuses to say anything and insults Smeek. Being the savage that he is, Goron eliminates two militants with a knife and dies with his honor. Smeek's gang takes Jasna and dozens of Serbs hostage in the Slatna airport. Unwilling to accept his subordination to NATO, Smeek kills the doctor and his assistant Martha. He begins to interrogate Jasna about the whereabouts of Shatalov. During the interrogation, Smeek kills a hostage and threatens to kill a little girl. Feeling defeated, Jasna gives up the coordinates of Shatalov. Smeek leaves to find Shatalov, and his thugs kill all the hostages except for Yasna, whom Smuck ordered not to touch. Fortunately, the little girl managed to hide. <laughs> Shatalov's old crew arrive at the airport and are joined by Shatalov, Vik, and Fadil. The crew is not happy to be reunited, and during their argument, an enemy reconnaissance car appears with Smeek and his gang. Sniper Vera, who is already in position, kills two enemies, but is wounded by a heavy machine gun. The remaining rivals quickly flee. Arriving at the Shabalov's empty apartment, Smeek learns from his henchmen that the airport was captured by the enemy, and he becomes furious. Shatalov notices more than a hundred militants approaching. Meanwhile, a group of peacemaking forces under the command of Colonel Platov are preparing to breach the Slatina airport. Beck's group takes position after sunset. Smeek's militants arrive at the airport and the Call of Duty deathmatch begins. After several unsuccessful attempts to penetrate the airport, the militants fire mortars at the airfield. During the shelling, a fighter nicknamed Giri is mortally wounded. The explosion leaves a mountain of debris and Fadil shoots an RPG through the wooden ceiling of the terminal. To destroy the mortars, one soldier sacrifices himself by directing a loaded fuel truck at them. Saving Yasna, Shatalov is severely wounded, and Wick loses his leg in an explosion. Realizing that his time has come, he puts on the Red Barret in order to die with dignity, and he stays in the gunfight to give Shatalov cover. By morning, Beck's unit had almost no ammunition left. All the surviving members of the group gather in the control room. Smeek kills Vic by cutting his head off and demands that those around him surrender. The group has no intention of surrendering alive, but they only have four ammunition rounds left. Vera decides to shoot herself, but before their inevitable death, they hear Russians over the radio and understand that the convoy of comrades has arrived at the airport. The remaining eight gunmen flee for their lives and Smeek tries to escape in a car, but he is stabbed to death by Fadil. Beck's special forces unit leaves the airport. Yasna and the girl are found by the Russian soldiers, who occupied the entire territory shortly before the arrival of NATO forces. One year later in the city of Belgorod, Jasna leaves this church and walks down the street. In a nearby taxi sits Andrei Shatalov. 
Shatalov is encouraged by the driver to approach and talk to Jasna. After hesitating, Shatalov gets out of the car and calls out to Jasna. She hears him, turns around, and the movie has a happy ending. Thanks for watching our channel, The Bright Storyteller. If you like our content, feel free to subscribe and like our video. If there's a movie you would like to see on this channel, write down your comment below. And I'll see you in the next one.